When we get exposed to toxins, whatever the toxins are, heavy metals like lead or mercury or mold, our bodies have a detoxification capability to break down some of this stuff and get it out of there. But when you cross the line of competence and you can't tolerate this stuff anymore, it accumulates in your bloodstream. And your brain says, get this stuff off out of the highway. Get it off the highway. Your bloodstream's just a highway. And these toxins get stored into your tissue to get them away from the brain. So lead goes into your bones, mercury goes into your brain and many other tissues. Arsenic goes into the kidneys, uh, organophosphates, petroleum products, they go into the fat cells. People get more fat. You don't get more fat cells after the age of two or three. They just get bigger and smaller. Well, what, what are they getting bigger with? They're getting bigger with toxins and then water to dilute those toxins so the fat cells swell and you get bigger. But you don't get more fat cells. This was a fantastic interview with Dr. Tom O'Brien. And I just want to point out that there were a few sections in the interview where it may seem a little choppy or cut in and out, but stick with it because it is a fantastic interview. We cover so much about toxins, uh, your, your immune health, and all the things that you need to do. We get in some actionable things too for your health. So stick around. You're going to want to be here for this episode. If you haven't done so already, go ahead and click that subscribe button down below. It's a little red button, you punch that, and it's gonna notify you every time we put out a new episode that can help you improve your bone health. And then also, if you haven't done so already, head over to bonecoach.com, sign up for the free seven-day osteoporosis kickstart. That's gonna walk you through everything you need to be doing right now to get on the path to improvement and stronger bones. After you do those two things, go ahead and press play on this episode, and I'll see you inside. Welcome, welcome to this episode of The Bone Coach Show. Joining us today to explore gluten, wheat, its impact on your health, and the connection to bone loss and osteoporosis is Dr. Tom O'Brien. Dr. Tom O'Brien is on a mission to make health simple with his mantra, making it easy to do the right thing. Renowned as a chronic disease detective, he specializes in food sensitivities, environmental toxins, and autoimmune diseases. Dr. O'Brien serves on the teaching faculty at the Institute for Functional Medicine and the National University of Health Sciences. His training programs have empowered tens of thousands of global practitioners to delve into the complexities of wheat sensitivity and autoimmune conditions. Author of the best-selling books, You Can Fix Your Brain and The Autoimmune Fix, Dr. O'Brien provides actionable insights into achieving cognitive well-being and addressing degenerative diseases. His 2016 docuseries, Betrayal, the autoimmune disease solution they're not telling you has been watched by over half a million people worldwide. He is also the visionary behind the Gluten Summit, A Grain of Truth, a collaborative platform featuring world experts on gluten-related health issues. And you can always find Dr. Tom O'Brien at thedoctor.com and theglutensummit.com. Dr. Tom, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. It's a real pleasure being with you. I'm looking forward to the conversation. So Let's talk about some of the things that you're really, you are really an expert on wheat and gluten. And sometimes when people hear these terms, they kind of know what it is. They kind of don't want to know what it is. I mean, most people know what wheat is, but can you maybe unpack just a little bit about what is uh, the difference between wheat and what's the difference between gluten? Sure, you bet. Um, wheat is the food that grows or uh, the, the plant that grows out of the earth. And when you harvest the plant and you mill the plant, you make flour out of it. That flour is called wheat flour. Now, in wheat flour, there are many, many different components, many. And one of them, the primary one that's been studied more than any other, is gluten. But gluten is a category. It's not just in wheat. There's gluten in rice and gluten in corn and gluten in quinoa. I mean, it's, it's a category within grains, but it's the toxic gluten proteins in wheat, rye, and barley. When people talk about gluten and problems with gluten, that's the ones that they're referring to. And they're a major player in causing inflammation, but there are other components in wheat that sometimes are more powerful to trigger an inflammatory response. It's not just gluten. So we cut our teeth in science by identifying the gluten proteins and what they do in the human body for some people. Now we know that there's more than just the gluten proteins. There's, there's 62 
different components of wheat that can trigger an immune response. Uh, but uh, the gluten proteins, and specific, and there's a category of them in wheat, the main one's called alpha gliadin. And that's, that's the big kahuna. That's the one that most studies have been done on. But what's important to know, it's not exclusive. There's more in wheat that may be a problem for one, for some people. So if somebody says, you don't have a problem with gluten, the test for gluten is negative, then if you're educated, you say, well, what about the amylase trypsin inhibitors? And the doctor looks at what? Or you know, what about the gluteomorphins or the prodynorphins or the gliadins, the omega, not the alpha gliadins, but the omega gliadins or the gamma gliadins? And the doctor will say, what are you talking about? You know, most docs just don't know because we all cut our teeth in learning about the potential problems of wheat by talking about gluten and specifically the alpha gliadin protein in the family of glutens in wheat. Yeah, and that's fascinating. When people hear that, they're like, wow, I never knew there was so much to unpacking wheat and unpacking gluten. Can you talk about yeah. why someone would go wheat free or gluten free and and should everyone be wheat free and gluten free yeah i never say everyone should be wheat free or gluten free ever uh, but i always say if someone has a health concern whatever that health concern is you just need to test comprehensively is my body is my immune system fighting wheat if it is well that's end of discussion well, I feel fine when I eat wheat. It doesn't matter how you feel. If your immune system is fighting that food, by definition, what that means is inflammation. It's creating inflammation. Now, that's the big kahuna. The Center for Disease Control tells us that 14 of the 15 top causes of death in the world today are chronic inflammatory diseases. Everything except unintentional injuries, accidents, is a chronic inflammatory disease. Kidney, liver, skin, brain, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, autism, it doesn't matter. They're chronic inflammatory diseases. That's the big kahuna that we all need to understand. And when we understand that, then the rational approach is, am I inflamed right now? And how do I reduce this inflammation to stop. And what we now know, the science is really clear. You know, I, recently I interviewed David Furman at the Buck Institute of Aging. And this is a brilliant scientist who has the contract and the funding from NASA to figure out why our astronauts are aging so quickly in space. What's the mechanism? What's going on? And he's published a number of papers now. It's this low grade, chronic inflammation that's going on under the surface while we feel fine for 20 years before you start getting brain fog or short-term memory loss. Where did I park my car in the parking lot? Which is the early progressive steps in the development of Alzheimer's and dementia. But we know, excuse me, that's going on for 20 years, killing off brain cells, killing off brain cells, killing off brain cells before you ever have a symptom. It's this chronic low-grade inflammation while you feel fine that's really the big killer. And the one that we, and not just the killer of life, but the killer of vitality. You're fatigued. It's always inflammation, always, without exception. And there's not much in medicine that's all or every, but this is every. So when you... I mean, you can't argue with this. You know, when you see the science, it's really clear. But nobody is looking at this from the point of view, how do I reduce inflammation? If it's okay, I'd like to give you a little background science on this that's Please. coming out of Harvard. Please. So we'll, we'll go to Professor Alessio Fasano. Professor Fasano is a professor of medicine, Harvard Medical School, Professor of Nutrition, Harvard School of Public Health, the Director of Celiac Research at Harvard, the Director of Mucosal Immunology at Harvard, that's the lining of your lungs, the lining of your brain, the lining of your gut, mucosal immunology, 
and the director, not director, the chief of pediatric gastroenterology at Mass General at Harvard. This guy has five titles. Any one title is a lifelong dream for someone at the top of their game. He's got five. We think he's going to win a Nobel Prize. We truly do, and we hope so, because it was him and his team that identified the mechanism that causes this thing called leaky gut. And uh, it's a protein called zonulin. And he first published on this protein in 1997. And so for 25 years now, he's been publishing zonulin and pancreas problems, zonulin and brain problems, zonulin and kidney problems, zonulin and autoimmune diseases, zonulin and attention deficit. I'm, hundreds of papers demonstrating that the leaky gut is involved in all of these conditions. It sets them up. And he's always so careful about what he says, so he's not misquoted. This is, and uh, he's the author of, I don't know, a few hundred, maybe 300 papers now. Last time I checked, it was around 240, but that was a year and a half or two years ago. And there's usually six or seven authors on the research paper. And then the last one, Alessio Fasano, meaning he's overseeing everything about that research project. This paper, he wrote by himself. And he's always so careful about what he says, right? But he wrote this himself. And the title says it all. All disease begins in the, quote, leaky gut, the role of zonulin in the development of chronic inflammatory diseases. Now, 14 of the 15 top causes of death are chronic inflammatory diseases. And now we have this incredible researcher at Harvard saying all disease begins in the gut. The role of zonulin, leaky gut, in the development of chronic inflammatory diseases. And he talks about five pillars in the development of chronic inflammatory diseases, including osteoporosis, of course. But there are five pillars in the development. And he calls it the perfect storm in the development of chronic inflammatory diseases. The first of the five, genetics. Can't do anything about genetics. That's the deck of cards that you were dealt in life, right? And doctors say sometimes, well, let's turn those genes off. You can't turn genes off. There's no evidence you can turn genes off. Genes operate on dimmer switches. And you can dim down the expression of genes, like an Alzheimer's gene or a breast cancer gene. And you can turn up genes of anti-inflammation one cup of blueberries a day for three years and your brain's functioning as well as it did 13 years earlier because the polyphenols in blueberries turn up the genes of anti-inflammation in the brain. Hey, it's Bone Coach Kevin Ellis. I wanna take one more minute to talk about if you are somebody who was newly diagnosed with osteopenia or osteoporosis and you're at a point where you're stressed, you're worried, you're overwhelmed, you have no idea where to start or how to get started in getting confident in your plan, I wanna tell you about the Stronger Bone Solution Program. Over 5,000 people have come through the Stronger Bone Solution Program and it walks you through the exact process you need to fill in the missing pieces, uncover critical things in your plan that you may not be aware of, and help you make modifications, adjustments, and tweaks to get you to the place where you're building stronger bones. I want you to get confident in your plan so that you can focus on living life and enjoying the life that you deserve with the people you love most. So if that's where you wanna be, head over to bonecoach.com forward slash apply and apply for our Stronger Bone Solution program right now. I'm Bone Coach Kevin Ellis. I want to see you inside this program. I want to help you get on the path to improvement and stronger bones. Hope to see you inside very soon. Let's get back to the episode. So genes, number one, they operate on dimmer switches. Number two of the perfect storm is environmental triggers. The things in the environment that we're exposed to and the most common environmental trigger is what's on the end of your fork. That's most common. But there are many others. If you live in a moldy house, you're breathing mold all day. Every Mrs. Patient, if you go on holiday, when you come home, do you have to open the windows to air the house out? Oh, yeah, that's mold. And you're living with this low-grade mold all the time. 
Now, our friend, Dr. Dale Bredesen, who wrote the book, The End of Alzheimer's, and he published on reversing Alzheimer's or stopping progression and ar arresting and reversing in 100 patients in a paper he published three or four years ago. He tells us of the five types of Alzheimer's, the most common type, about 60 to 65 percent of Alzheimer's is called inhalation Alzheimer's. It's what we're breathing in the air, which you can't see, you often can't smell, but it's toxic. And that's inhalation Alzheimer's, but it's an environmental trigger. So number two is the environmental triggers. And there's another category of environmental triggers. It's worth mentioning here because I know you'll have shows on this in the future. When we get exposed to toxins, whatever the toxins are, heavy metals like lead or mercury or mold, our bodies have a detoxification capability to break down some of this stuff and get it out of there. But when you cross the line of competence, it's called the line of tolerance. When you cross the line of tolerance and you can't tolerate this stuff anymore, it accumulates in your bloodstream. And your brain says, get this stuff off out of the highway. Get it off the highway. Your bloodstream's just a highway. Get it off the highway. And these toxins get stored into your tissue to get them away from the brain. So lead goes into your bones, mercury goes into your brain and many other tissues, arsenic goes into the kidneys, uh, organophosphates, petroleum products, they go into the fat cells. People get more fat. You don't get more fat cells after the age of two or three. They just get bigger and smaller. Well, what, what are they getting bigger with? They're getting bigger with toxins and then water to dilute those toxins so the fat cells swell and you get bigger but you don't get more fat cells after the age of two or three. So there's two categories of environmental toxins. There's environmental toxins in the air, in the food, uh, the, the pesticides, insecticides in the food, but then there's also environmental toxins that are inside your body already. And that's called endotoxin. It's inside your body. It's been accumulating for years. Big problem, people that have uh, uh, fertility problems, recurrent miscarriages, uh, infertility, un uh, unsuccessful in uh, assisted fertility centers, big problem. Uh, and I'm going to divert a little bit, then I'll, I'll come back to number three in the perfect storm because this is so important. In the Journal of the American Medical Association, they published a study that said uh, the study was on couples going to assisted fertility centers. And as you know, they're spending tens of thousands of dollars and extremely stressful just trying to have a baby and healthy delivery. And the editors of the journal, the American Medical Association, said this is an elegant study using sophisticated biomarkers to prove their point. Now, you may not know this, but the editors of the most prestigious journal in the English language, they don't say that very often. They don't give a stamp of approval to a study. So I saw the comments and I said, oh, I have to read this. And they ruled out all of the factors that they could think of that might contribute to success or failure with being at an assisted fertility center. They ruled out alcohol. They ruled out tobacco. They ruled out exercise. They ruled out obesity. They ruled out uh, socioeconomic class. They ruled out all of these different factors and narrowed it down to one thing. How many servings of fruits and vegetables are the, is the woman eating a day? Now, once again, this is an elegant study using sophisticated biomarkers. So they put these uh, pregnant women, no, not, not pregnant, these women at assisted fertility centers into four categories. The lowest amount of servings of fruits and vegetables a day, the next to the third, and the highest number of servings. And when they compared the highest number of servings of conventional fruits and vegetables a day compared to the lowest number of servings of conventional fruits and vegetables a day, those in the highest category eating lots of fruits and vegetables had an 18% less likelihood of successful implantation. The more fruits and vegetables you ate, the worse the outcome. But that wasn't the jaw dropper. Those people, if they did get pregnant, they had a 26% less likelihood of a live birth. Miscarriages, 
and stillbirths. Wait, wait, wait. The more fruits and vegetables I eat, the worse the outcome? Yes, if they're conventional. They also had a group of people eating organic. And when they divided that category into fourths, it was the exact opposite. The more fruits and vegetables you eat, the higher the rate of success. Well, well wait a minute. What does that mean? It means the number of insecticides and pesticides and rodenticides and fungicides and antibiotics in the food at the supermarket for the last number of years has been going up and up and up and up with no regulations or minimal regulations. And these things accumulate in your body and they're called endotoxins when they accumulate in their body and they're causing this low grade inflammation and the most sensitive tissue in the human body is the sperm and the egg. They're the most sensitive of everything. So if they're in an environment full of organophosphates, less likely they, they can function normally. This is a jaw-dropping study because so these couples are trying so hard and they're spending so much money, but nobody's telling them this. So I bring this up here because I know that's your generation and you'll have people on to talk more about this in the future. And how do you detox? How do you get this stuff out of you? How do you find out if you have it in you? And then how to get it out? I'll come back and do another one with you if you want. But if I give it to you, you then can carry it out to your world. You know, because I'm an old fart. You know, I'm not, I, my language is not that attractive to 20 and 30 somethings, right? So I don't know the right way of saying it, but you do. So, I mean, it, it was shocking. It was shocking to see. And oh, here's the good news. Those that were put in the category of organic fruit and vegetable consumption qualified to be in the category if they were eating three meals a week of organic, not 21 meals a week, just three, because that usually meant they're doing other things to be healthy also. You know, they're not smoking, but the other people weren't smoking either. Uh, so, but it, it was organics so that made the difference at three times three servings a week. Okay, so that's number two, environmental triggers. The environmental triggers have their fingers on the knob of your dimmer switches for your genes. You, they turn your genes up, they turn your genes down. We used to call that epigenetics, around the genes. Now we know, and the, the, the term is still used, epigenetics, but it's really the entire environment. It's what the air you breathe and uh, the amount of stress hormones that are inside can be an environmental trigger if you're under too much stress, which most people in our society are today. It's not normal. You wanna make sure a test animal does not get pregnant? Put them under stress every day to where they make a lot of stress hormones every day. They do not, nature will not allow them to get pregnant. And so, you know, I grew up, uh, I have a family in Chicago. Uh, when Second City first started. And that was the era of Dan, Dan uh, uh, Belushi, John Belushi, Dan Aykroyd, Gilda Radner. Uh, and these characters, Gilda Radner had a character called Roseanne, Rosanna Dana. And it's really fun to go back to YouTube and look at Roseanne, Rosanna Dana and see her character. And there was a term that she used all the time. You know, she just looks at someone and she says, you think, right? <laughs> it's like, when you see this science, you th I mean, it's not rocket science. You live under too much stress. Your body has protective mechanisms because if you're pregnant out in the wilderness like our ancestors were, they could be killed very easily. So they can't get pregnant under times of increased stress. And that's a whole discussion in itself. But that's number two of Fasano's perfect storm, environmental triggers. And you see now how this is actually a weekend course. You know, this is a whole weekend to talk about this stuff. Number three, when you have these environmental triggers that trigger all of this inflammation, they change the balance of the good guys and the bad guys in the gut. Because the largest source of environmental triggers is what's on the end of your fork. It's what we're eating and drinking. That's why 70% of your immune system's in the gut because that's where most of the environment comes into us. And when you have too many uh, bad environmental triggers, inflammatory environmental triggers, 
you change the balance of the good guys and the bad guys in the gut. That's And the geek term for that is dysbiosis. And all that means is too many bad guys, not enough good guys, right? And most of us have heard something about um, uh, probiotics and taking probiotics that they can be helpful. Yeah, it can, it can. But that's that category. That's number three in the perfect storm. Next, Mrs. Patient, your digestive system is a tube. It goes from the mouth to the other end. If you could imagine a donut, if you could stretch a donut out, one big long donut, and look down the, the tube of the donut, that's your digestive tract. So when you swallow food, it's not your body, it's in the tube. Well, how does it get through the walls of the tube to get into the bloodstream to be used as building blocks to make new bone cells and muscle cells and brain cells? How does that happen? Well, that's the process of digestion and absorption. Now, think of proteins like a pearl necklace. The acid in your stomach undoes the clasp of the pearl necklace. Now you have a string of pearls. Your digestive enzymes act like scissors to snip that pearl necklace into two and then snip it into four and snip to 16 and 64. Snip, 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 snip until you're down to each pearl of the pearl necklace. We call that an amino acid. And the amino acids, now, the inside of the tube is lined with cheesecloth. And if you remember your grandmother making gravy, you know, she's got this cloth and she pours the gravy that she just cooked into the cloth and the liquid comes through, but the clumps that she couldn't break up stay on the outside, right? So this tube, this donut, when you swallow food, the inside of the tube is lined with cheesecloth. So only really small molecules of the food that you eat can get through into the bloodstream. That's why your digestive tract, one of the reasons why your digestive tract is 20 or 25 feet long, because it takes a whole lot longer to break up prime rib into little pearls of the pearl necklace than it does a banana, right? And so snip, 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 until it's small enough, it goes right through the walls of the cheesecloth and the tube into the bloodstream, and boom, your bloodstream is just a highway. Lots of traffic on the highway. Everything's going in the same direction, but it's just a highway. There's no lanes, you know, everything bouncing into each other, like bumper cars at the circus, right? I remember, you know, you, you see little kids at the circus smashing into each other. That's what's going on in your bloodstream all the time. It's just a highway. But... When you have the, number two of the perfect storm, the environmental triggers activating the genes of inflammation, creating number three, dysbiosis, too many bad guys, not enough good guys, inside the gut, that inflammation from the dysbiosis tears the cheesecloth. When you tear the cheesecloth, Larger molecules called macromolecules, big molecules, get through the cheesecloth into the bloodstream before they've been broken down small enough. They're not bad for you, that, those molecules. They're just too big. They got through the tears in the cheesecloth, these macromolecules. Now they're on the highway. And your brain says, what the heck is that? That's not something I can use to make new brain cells or muscle cells or bone cells. I better fight that. Now you make antibodies to chicken or to tomatoes or to beef or to any food, any macromolecule that gets through your immune system, trying to protect you from some invader that's not supposed to be there is going to fight that thing. So leaky gut, the tears in the cheesecloth is number four of the pillars in the perfect storm. And when these macromolecules get through into the bloodstream and they're on the highway, and the brain says, whoa, we better fight that thing. Now you make the antibodies to fight those macromolecules. That creates the inflammation in the bloodstream. Systemic inflammation, that's number five. That's the perfect storm in the development of chronic inflammatory diseases. This is what they're teaching at Harvard Medical School right now. It's so cool that they're teaching this. You know, it's so much more complicated. So this is the basic version for the basic physician, Fasano's article is for the basic doctor out there to understand these principles. 
and for general public. And you can get the article. You just go to Google and type in Fasano, F-A-S-A-N-O, all disease begins in the gut. And the article pops right up. And you read this, you say, well, this just makes sense. So the mechanism that causes osteoporosis is the same mechanism that causes multiple sclerosis. Really? Yes. It's the same mechanism that causes Parkinson's? Yes. It's the same mechanism that causes psoriasis or Hashimoto's thyroid disease? Yes. It's always this mechanism. All disease begins in the leaky gut. So when you're dealing with any condition, irrespective of what it is, you always include addressing the gut as part of the protocols to address whatever condition you're concerned about. That was a fantastic explanation and walkthrough, Dr. Tom. And I remember when I first started learning about gluten and zonulin and celiac disease and all this stuff, Alessio Fasano's work was one of the very first things that I started to read. And I was just absolutely fascinated with the amount of information that he put together, but also you, you, you are a pioneer and, and a leader in this field as well. And, you know, I've learned so much from you also, I would be interested in, I'm sure our audience would be interested too, is how do you evaluate? How do you know if you have issues with gluten, if you have issues with wheat, if you have chronic low grade inflammation, uh, if you, if you do have a leaky gut, how do you know? Yeah, really good question. Uh, uh, the rule is test, don't guess. Test, don't guess. And many laboratories are quite frustrated with me because uh, I encourage the doctors on stage. You know, I lecture all over the world. Uh, I've not gone to the far east and reach out now, and so maybe in... 25, maybe, or maybe 2024. I'll go to Japan. I don't know. Uh, I've just got a young boy and I don't want to leave for that long. Right. But um, uh, the uh, labs don't like it because I tell doctors all the time, the only way you know if your laboratory is a good test to use is that you have to do double blind testing. Well, what does that mean? It means when you put a needle in somebody's arm to draw blood, you draw a second tube of blood and you label the second tube Joe Smith and you send it separately to the same lab. So the lab doesn't know it's the same patient's blood and you order the same test. Now the doctor has to pay for the second test and doctors don't like to do that, but they have to pay for the second because you can't bill insurance, you can't bill the patient. But if you wanna know, if you're getting accurate information, you pick the test and you do five patients double blind. Now, if you get two out of the five that come back and the results are so different, you don't know which one to talk to the patient about, then you've got a lab that's outdated and you should not be using that laboratory test. Who can argue with that? Irrespective of what the labs say, well, our sensitivity and specificity is the best in the market. Oh, really? Show me the science. And they can't. They don't have the science on that. And they'll try to use different language sometimes to get around the issue of sensitivity and specificity, which is what you want to make sure that is accurate, right? And when I did that in the early 2000s on the labs that I was using, somewhere around two or three times out of 10 and I, I did a bunch of them. I spent a lot of money to do it. But I, I was just shocked because you don't know patients coming in for their test results and the test results are back. And, you know, you look at them and here's a patient's name and here's Joe Smith. And it's, what? Which one do I talk to him about? Do I talk to him about the one that says everything's great? Or I talk to the one that says, no, there's a problem here. Because they'd be that different sometimes. So, and I'm telling you this because everyone needs to make sure of the tests that are being used to identify if you have a problem in a particular area. Now in 2015, a new laboratory opened and they patented their technology. So the only ones that have it, it's called silicone chip technology. And their sensitivity and specificity is 97 to 100%, which means they're right on the money 
every single time. And uh, I and the paper the the paper I read on this came from Mayo Clinic. It came from one of the true greats in the field of celiac research, Joe Murray at Mayo. There are four men that I'd been talking about for years are the four horsemen of celiac disease. And it's Alessio Fasano at Harvard, Stefano Guandolini at the University of Chicago, Peter Green at Columbia, and Joe Murray at Mayo. And Joe Murray published this paper, calling it a new era in laboratory medicine. Now that's as far out on the spectrum as a geek scientist at Mayo Clinic is gonna go. They're not gonna say, this blows away the accuracy of any of the labs you've been using up to now, doctors. They're not gonna say that because it's politics, you know, and they've got a position to uphold, but I'm gonna tell you straight, just do double blind tests. You'll find out for yourself how accurate your lab is. So silicone chip technology is the most sensitive tests that are out there. And the tests are called the zoomers because you zoom in on the problem. And there's the wheat zoomer, which includes the most comprehensive test for leaky gut on the market today, along with the most comprehensive test for wheat. And they put them together as a brilliant marketing strategy to go after the labs that were offering leaky gut tests and over here, their wheat test. Well, let's put them together. Let's make it cheaper and let's make it much more comprehensive. And as a doctor, I, I was in seventh heaven. It's like, I'm in the candy store. I've got the best available to use with my patients. You know, it was like unbelievable. And so I started going on. Well, when I read the paper from Murray, I called the lab. I got the name of the lab from the paper and I called the lab and I said, hi, I wanna to talk to your president. Guy gets on the line. I say, hi, this is Dr. Tom O'Brien. And he said, the Dr. Tom O'Brien? And I said, well, I don't know. If it's about wheat, yeah, maybe. I don't know anyone else is talking about this. Yeah, yeah, well, what can I do for you? Is this your test? Yes, yes. Are these numbers accurate? Yeah, I, I've never heard of this kind of sensitivity and specificity. I need to sell. Please come visit. Please come visit. So I flew up to Silicon Valley. And I went to see the lab. You know, you have to put on a spacesuit to go in there because it's a dust-free environment because they're using silicone chips. And they can look at hundreds of different markers in one little blood draw. You know, it's like, I don't have my phone in front of me. So I'm just going to use this Kleenex, this tissue. And imagine it's my iPhone. If I have a 1990, you know, I'm going to have... In 20 years or so, I'm going to have this little black thing in my hand or in my pocket, and I'm just going to push a couple of buttons. And within five seconds, and while I'm talking to people with my iPhone and I, and I do this, I'm pushing the buttons. I open up the app, Air Matters, and I've got it set up for cities all over the world. So you just push a couple of buttons. You turn the phone on. You push the, the app you want to open, Air Matters, and it opens up to the screen that tells me the air particulate matter in Chicago today is 42. Well, it's not great, but it's not too bad. But LA is 78. Do not exercise outside today. There's too much uh, particulate matter in the air. And I can tell you the, the amount of garbage in the air in 10 seconds anywhere in the world. And if I had told you that in 1990, you would have thought I was watching too much Star Trek. It was a paradigm that we couldn't imagine, right? Technology improves so much. In laboratory medicine, technology improves. Find out the actual laboratory technology they're using for your blood tests, and then just Google, when was this test discovered? 1982, 1985, 1994, they're 20, 30 years old. And there's been such a skyrocket of scientific improvements. We all know AI today is like, oh my God, the new horizon. But up until now with iPhones and all the things that the phones can do, we couldn't have imagined it 20 years ago. The same thing has occurred in laboratory medicine and the labs don't like it because they've got the old equipment, you know, and they've got their money invested and they're not gonna spend 
a million dollars to buy new equipment and change all their software for their report forms and get educated on how to interpret these new markers. They're not going to do that, right? So that's why the labs don't like when I'm on stage. But I'm sorry, you know, it's people's health, you know, so I'm not going to stop. And I wrote about this in my uh, most recent book, You Can Fix Your Brain. Now, that book could easily have been about you can fix your bones or you can fix your thyroid. It doesn't matter. The mechanism is the same. So when you learn the mechanism, and you don't have to get the geeky science. You just have to have the big picture. I need to identify my inflammation and I need to reduce my inflammation. So how do you identify your inflammation? You do the zoomers. There's a wheat zoomer, dairy zoomer, lectin zoomer, soy zoomer, corn zoomer, uh, environmental toxin zoomer, gut zoomer. You do the zoomers and you find out what your status is with the most accurate technology that's available today. And that's your starting point. And it's not going to be good. There's going to be all kinds of problems because you don't understand. The inflammation is going on killing you off your brain cells for 20 years while you feel fine. And I'm, I'll give you one stat on this. Blue Cross Blue Shield published in February of 2020. We've got a problem. In the four-year period between 2013 and 2017, so this is before the virus, in that four-year period, there was a 407% increase in claims for Alzheimer's in 30 to 44-year-olds. That's your generation. A 407% increase in four years. Because... Your generation's parents were the first ones to start absorbing these toxins, that these chemical companies started using more and more chemicals, more and more toxins, and they accumulate in our body. So the 20-somethings and the 30-somethings were born in a toxic soup to some degree. But now that toxic soup is much, much worse. And that's the endotoxin causing the inflammation that in the assisted fertility center studies demonstrates the more fruits and vegetables you eat, the less, the, the worse the outcome. You, do you see how this all ties together? Absolutely. Absolutely. And I know everybody listening sees how this all ties together as well. And as you're speaking about toxins too, you know, I, I know this uh, pretty, pretty well, just from my father was somebody who, um, he got cancer from agent orange when he was in Vietnam for, you know, 22 months, he got sprayed with that defoliant. And then he was exposed to dioxin and really high amounts, uh, another exposure after that. And I know that was probably a contributor that gets passed down the line. Right. And there are multiple people yeah. that get impacted by that. Uh, but I know my there next, are other yeah, my, my next book, is and i don't know the title yet but this is the working title healthy conception healthy pregnancy healthy delivery happy baby that's going to be the the theme of the book and it's the accumulated toxins that are are contributing greatly to the dramatic increase you may have heard some of the numbers about the them the percentages of kids that are on antidepressants or anti-anxiety, the number of kids that are being diagnosed with autism, it's through the roof. It, when, when I came into practice, it was one in 10,000. And there's no better tests than there were 70 years ago. And But now it's one in 36. It's, it's unbelievable what's happening. And we're blind to it. We don't understand it. And we're still living our lives using the toxic chemicals that they advertise that tell us they're good for us, you know, and the dishwashing detergent we use. Never run your dishwasher during the day. You turn on just before going to sleep because it's not airtight. And those toxic chemicals, those detergents in the hot water, they seep out into the air. And if you're out there in the kitchen, well, your family's breathing those chemicals right? So you run the dishwasher at night when you're sleeping. You have to start thinking that way. And NASA, I'll tell you one more. NASA did the study. Our astronauts were going loopy in space. 
and they ne they never talk about it to to the press, but they were going loopy, and Houston would say, uh, uh, "Shuttle, could you repeat that, please?" And they get they would repeat, it and they just look at each other like, "Where'd that come from?" Right? So they knew there was a problem. They found out it's the air in the space shuttles because they're in an enclosed environment and it's the phthalates in the air, the plasticizers, the chemicals used to mold plastic that outgas into the air and you're breathing that stuff. So NASA financed the studies to look at houseplants. Because they had heard something about houseplants um, cleaning the air. And you go to my website, the dr.com forward slash plant, and you download the handout from NASA of what plants, two six inch house plants in a 10 by 10 room absorb 74% of the toxins in the air. So you put them in your kids' bedrooms, you put them in the living room, you put them in the kitchen, you put them in the bathroom because there's plastic all over your house and the not just the plasticizers, but also the uh, flame retardant chemicals in your beds, in the sheets and the blankets, unless you're using organic cotton. That uh, I've never heard of anybody dying or not dying in a house fire because they were sleeping under flame retardant chemical soaked bedding. I mean, why are we buying this stuff? Well, they told us we have to. No, no you don't buy organic. Buy organic sheets and organic blankets, right? Because you're reducing the amount. Now, there's no evidence that the amount of phthalates that you breathe in the air in your home in 24 hours or the amount of flame retardant chemicals that you breathe in your bedroom or the amount of phthalates that are in your bloodstream in four to five minutes from nail polish because it's the phthalates that make the polish hard on your nails. The chemicals get in your bloodstream in four to five minutes. There's no evidence that that amount of chemicals is toxic to humans. There's absolutely no evidence. And that's how they get away with this crap, excuse me. But they bought off the senators and the representatives because they just put a little provision in the bill called the Toxic Substance Control Act of 1974, which has never been modified, never. And the chemical industry every year makes sure nobody touches that bill. Because the bill says you have to demonstrate that the amount of chemical that humans are exposed to in 24 hours is toxic to them. It's not. But it accumulates in your body over years. In your dad's case, that was an exception. There was excessive amounts that he was exposed to. But for you and I and our children and our grandchildren, it's these minute amounts that accumulate in your body over time that are the endotoxin demonstrated in the studies about assisted fertility centers, right? So you have to learn all these little nitpicky things that you do. And the subtitle of my book, You Can Fix Your Brain, which number one in seven categories on Amazon, I'm proud to say, uh, when we launched it, uh, for brain like seizures and attention deficit and Alzheimer's, number one. It was great, lots of great feedback. The subtitle of the book, You Can Fix Your Brain, is just one hour a week to the best memory, productivity, and sleep you've ever had. Because that's the key to success. Everything I'm telling you here is just overwhelming. I know it's overwhelming. We've got an hour. I'm going to blast you, and then hopefully you'll want to learn more on your own. I mean, right? So... Every Tuesday night after dinner or every Sunday after services, whenever it is, but you pick a time and you tell your family every week, don't bother me for this hour. I'm going to learn a little bit more of how we can be healthier. And then you remember my talk about nail polish and you go to my book and you look at the three URLs for organic nail polish companies and you go online and you look at them and you say, that's okay, okay. And then you order some. Pay with your credit card, hook, hit send, and it took an hour. You're done for the week. Next week, you remember that I said when you put leftover food in plastic storage containers in the refrigerator, the next day that chicken has got phthalates in it.
because it was resting against the plastic storage container. And so you go to my URL, you go to my book, and you look at mileskimble.com, Amazon, and whatever the third one is. Oh, those are okay. Oh, I like those. And you order three round ones and two square ones and one for the pie, and you pay with your credit cards, hit send. You're done for the week. But never again are you going to poison your family with plastic storage containers. Give the containers to your husband to put to use out in the garage for nails. Store stuff in them out in the garage. Great. You nail the lid to the underside of a shelf, and then you just put it up on there, and it holds your nails like that. And then next week, you get the handout on plants. And you go to the store, you've got the, oh, I know those plants. Oh, I know those. They're inexpensive plants. And you get a bunch of plants. But every week you allocate one hour, just one hour, because it's overwhelming to think of how do I change my life? It's overwhelming. But in six months, you know, you see some friend you haven't seen. You say, wow, wow, what happened to you, man? You look great. Well, you know, I heard this lecture and then I read this book and so I got glass storage containers and I've changed my nail polish and we've got plants in all the rooms because they absorb 74% of the toxins in the air. And I'm buying organic at least three times a week now for our, my family's eating organic at least three times a week. And da, 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 da. there's 36 things in the book to do, right? And that's just the introduction. Your, your whole life will start to shift. You, you have this paradigm shift for the rest of your life. Because it's a poisoned world we're living in today. Without exception, it's a poisoned world. And you have to take control to protect you and your family. If not, you'll be one of the numbers. And it'll be osteoporosis. Or it'll be Alzheimer's. Or it'll be Parkinson's. Or it'll be lupus. It doesn't matter what the end-stage diagnosis is. That's determined by your genes and how you live your life. For example, you eat tuna fish three times a week. You likely have mercury toxicity. Because tuna is very high in mercury, right? So where the, the inflammation manifests, you pull it a chain, it always breaks at the weakest link, always. It's at one end, the middle, the other end, it's your heart, your brain, your liver, your kidneys, wherever your weak link is, that's where it's going to break. That's determined by your genes and antecedents, how you lived your life. And the pull on the chain is always inflammation. So stop pulling on the chain so hard. Well, how do I do that? Learn to live more of an anti-inflammatory lifestyle. Well, how do I do that? Well, it's for a week and you just start dialing it down one at a time, one at a time. Hey, it's Bone Coach Kevin Ellis. Thanks so much for tuning in to this episode of The Bone Coach Show. If you're finding it helpful, please leave a positive rating and review. Hit that like button, subscribe to the podcast or the channel. That lets us help more people and reach and serve more people. And it also lets us know that this is helpful to you on your journey to better health and stronger bones. And then also, right down in the show notes, you can actually find a link to my free bone healthy recipes guide that's going to give you access to some amazing and delicious recipes to support your journey to stronger bones and then also we have a link to my free stronger bones masterclass in the show notes too and that is the three-step process that has helped people in over 1500 cities around the world get confident in their plan for stronger bones over 110,000 people have have taken part in this and it's been really really helpful for them and i want you to have free access to it too so add your name and email right down there in the show notes get access to that free stronger bones masterclass and let's get you confident in your stronger bones plan today i'll pause now <laughs> No, that's fantastic. I mean, this is great. People need to hear how to make this actionable in their own life. Because a lot of times people hear, oh my gosh, yeah. the world's so toxic. And then they may hear a few solutions here or there, but they don't know how to actually implement those things into their daily life. So I love what you're saying here, which is like, look, you can set aside one hour a week, make progress. That's the most important thing. Just do one thing a week and then move to the next thing. And look, by the end of the right. year, how many things have you changed in your life? that are that much better. Right. And what's right. the what's the compounding interest on that for your health, for your family, all that stuff. I, I love the message. That's a great, great concept, the compounding interest, because that's what it is. It builds on itself. It's compounding. It's one plus one equals three. Every time you add a little more, you do the next step, you magnify your results 
more than what that step by itself would do. I love that. Dr. Tom, this has been fantastic, uh, a fantastic conversation. I appreciate your knowledge, your expertise. I know our audience does as well. I'd love for them to learn a little bit more about where they can find you and your work. Oh, thank you. Uh, our website is thedoctor.com, the dr.com. Just don't, don't spell the word doctor out, the dr.com. We've got videos and handouts and books and all kinds of things there. Fantastic. So we'll link to that in the show notes. Uh, and I just, any, any last words you want to share with our audience before we, we close this one down and let them know where they can find it. Oh, thank you. Well, we're launching a docu-series on Valentine's day, 2024. And for those who see this interview after that, it's evergreen. It's going to be there forever. My, my last one, uh, Betrayal, now has been seen by two, over 2 million people. And uh, uh, this one, this docuseries is called uh, The Inflammation Equation. And it's decoding what it takes to enhance the quality of your health. And it's, it's these concepts. And I, and I went to David Furman at the Buck Institute. We talked about the astronauts. And it's so cool. I've got lots of world-class scientists on it. It's very cool. And it's usable. Our emphasis is that every day will be helpful tips focusing on creating more of an anti-inflammatory life for you and your family. That's fantastic. Well, thank you again so much for sharing all of this with our audience. For everybody listening, you can find all of the resources, show notes, everything mentioned here today right down below this audio or video and at bonecoach.com. And I want to thank you again so much for your time. We'll see you in the next episode. Hey, it's Bone Coach Kevin Ellis. Hope you found that episode helpful and that you enjoyed it. Just one last reminder, if you haven't done so already, head over to bonecoach.com, sign up for your free seven-day osteoporosis kickstart. It's going to tell you everything you need to do to start getting on the path to improvement. Hope you found this helpful. I'm your Bone Coach Kevin Ellis. I'll see you soon.